goes one motif, a line, and every time it goes round, you add a note to one of them, and then they start to go out of phase with each other. the rules up we have specific rules and um, I think writing music for film we're very outside of those boundaries so it carries on and it you know it ultimately gets quite like quite tangled special place in film music, you know, there's a freedom there, that you're not constrained by the three and a half minute pop song, you're not constrained by the concert platform, it's a kind of Trojan horse, you can wheel all sorts of things in there and people will kind of not notice what, what you've done. I just had this system that I was playing with. That was like a sort of little oh, yeah. hey nonny no kind yeah, of Yeah, yeah, it's much more happy in there. Well, it doesn't want to be happy exactly. No, but because it's... it's got both emotions, that's what I'm having a trouble with. But then you could put some sort of. Um... I'm finding, of working on it, that the darkness of the film um, it actually allows the music not to be so dark. For a lot of the film, there are tears running down Joan's face. I mean, you know, if you kind of play that plangency, um, as much as the film does, I think you'd end up having pushed that button too many times, you know, you'd kind of get desensitised. Six. interesting group and I think it's something that Will and I um, got together and talked about we knew we wanted guitars <laughs> with a piece of wood that kind of makes a sound like bowing. And then somebody hitting the body of the guitar. So you, you end up with a sound that um, is not, you don't often hear from guitars. I think we agreed early on that it made sense to have a sort of vocal element to it because of the way it looks, really, and there's a lot of religious subtext, or not even subtext, text. So I think it felt that, um, you know, voices would put it in a context that would, would, would sort of stick to the film very well. And then within that, you know, we can sort of shoot off um, to a million different places. The idea of a mass of electric guitars pitted against a choir, pitted against lots of exotic percussion, pitted against synths, and even at times perhaps a bloody great pipe organ. It's going to be a completely miraculous and utterly original sound world. It's such a powerful film, you can't help but be completely uh, overtaken by it. It's tragic, but it's also uh, it's joyous to, to watch because the way it's shot, you know. I think seeing it from 35mm onto a giant screen will be amazing. So I'm running 35mm to run at silent speed and a big screen, 37 feet by 20 feet, which
which will hang on this truss here. The very best possible way to experience this kind of silent movie is in a theatre with other people and you've got live musicians. What matters about music is sharing it with people. Music is, the, is an act of communication from one person or group of people to some others. It's storytelling. film and this is a transcript of the trial she's actually running rings around the English inquisitors they can't get what they want from her, they can't make her say what they want her to say she's far too convinced of where she is, completely solid in her world, even though she's facing torture and um, you know, she's only a small person against all of these evil people she holds her ground it's an extraordinary tale. The way the film was made and the the way it looks and the, the, the way it sort of tells the story is fantastic. I, I, you know, it's really gut-wrenching. It also, it, it is very pure because it's a basically a, a montage of faces and the faces that have been chosen and the way that they are presented um, is all that we get. I mean, that's the whole thing. And, 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 but yet that provides this incredible mood that pervades the whole film. I think it's a, it's a real, it's a, it's a real masterpiece. 